What's going on guys? We're coming at you with another video here today. We are starting research for the 2020 FLW Pro Circuit. Uh, first event coming up soon. Shoot, it's probably uh, a month away. So it's time to start doing some research. Today I'm going to dive in, do some internet research, some map study, and just give you guys a breakdown on how exactly I prepare for an event. You know, you can learn so much information these days just with a computer and a notebook. And you can do a lot of your homework before you even get to the water to help better prepare yourself and in turn help you find and catch more bass. So I'm going to show you exactly what I do for each body of water. But like I said, today we're focusing on Sam Rayburn for the first FLW Pro Circuit event, which is in mid-January. So we're going to go on to the computer here, look up some past tournament results, some patterns, look at the weather, look at the water level. After we do all that, we're going to jump onto my tablet here, and we're going to look at Navionics, we're going to look at Lake Master, we're going to look at Google Earth. All those different things to try and find the areas that I need to focus on once I'm actually there. So there's so much you can do sitting right here in the your humble abode before you even make a cast. So let's jump in to get on the computer here. So before I even get to the computer, I got a nice notebook here and I make a page for each lake that I'm going to research. So today we're doing Rayburn. And, you know, I'm the type of learner where if I write something down, I'm going to have a better chance of remembering it. And that's just how I learn. So that's what I do. I'm going to take notes. It's going to help me learn exactly what I read here on the Internet. And it's going to help me become a better fisherman. So the notebook is key to me. Now let's get on to flwfishing.com and the first thing I'm going to do is search the lake I'm going to. So in this case it's Sam Rayburn. So we're going to go on here and search Sam Rayburn. And that's going to give me all the past tournaments that have been on Sam Rayburn. So I'm going to look through and find the events that are in a similar time of year. And I'm going to look through all of those and gather, you know, like a top 10 weight, a top 30 weight, and a top 50 weight. That way I just got an idea, a general idea of how good I have to catch them to get paid and to do well in the event. As you probably know, the FLW Tour was on Sam Rayburn in 2019. So there's all kinds of information from that event on there, as well as the Costa Series event in 2018, plenty of BFLs. So there is tons of information out there on Sam Rayburn. So I'm just sort of refreshing my memory. You know, I did all this same research last year. So I'm just running through and refreshing my memory and getting some weights. So we got all that written down here. We got weights from the last few years, some of the winning patterns and top 10 patterns here. So now I'm going to use this information to sort of relay it onto the map and kind of look for these type of areas of these patterns where these top finishing anglers were doing. You know, all this is information is available, so I'm going to use it to my advantage. So after I search through flwfishing.com, the next step is going to be right here on YouTube. I'm going to head over to YouTube and just search for like Lake Sam Rayburn and just kind of see what pops up. You know, there's plenty of the TV shows from the past events. There's plenty of other fishermen who fish Sam Rayburn all the time that, you know, give tips and whatnot. So I'm going to skim through these and see if there's anything worth watching and, you know, take any notes from there. But again, YouTube is a great platform. There's tons of information available. You can always learn something about a lake just from watching a few videos. So I'm going to take a little bit of time and do that. And move on to the next step of research. So after YouTube, I head to Google. 
start Googling Lake Sam Rayburn fishing reports, Lake Sam Rayburn water level, Lake Sam Rayburn tournament results. Look for some local tournament results that have been in the last few weeks or even this past week. And just to kind of get an informa any information on how the lake is setting up at this exact moment. You know, it's different every year. That's one big asterisk you have to put on all this information you, you receive here is it can be different every single year you go. So you can do all this research and have to throw it out the window once you get there and see the conditions. But I'm always going to be prepared. I'm going to have all this information at my fingertips and try to be the best prepared I can for the conditions that are coming. You know, looking here, it looks like it's a normal fall slash winter in Texas. The water isn't high like last year. It seems stable. The weather seems normal. So some of these past years may line up with how it's going to be this year. So that's one big asterisk you, you got to pay attention to is the conditions and the weather. It's always an asterisk anytime you go anywhere. So now that we've searched all that on the computer, it's time to move over towards the tablet. Now you can do some of this on the computer as well. Navionics has a great website. They have the all the maps available for free right online. So you can go to the Navionics chart viewer and view all that on your computer. But I prefer to do it on my tablet simply because the app, I can set the depth shading ranges so I can see those key spots that kind of pop out and uh, they're a little bit different color. So they're easier for you to find. So on my tablet here, I, uh, I use a couple different apps. I got the Navionics app. I got the Hummingbird app, Fish Smart and Google Earth, of course. So I'm able to utilize all these different overlays, all these different maps, and I can kind of sit here, look over the whole lake, find some areas that I like, find those little sweet spots that look right according to the research I've just done, and able to mark them on here. Then I can take this out in the boat with me and either transfer these to my Florence HDS-12s or just navigate using the tablet and be able to go check out those areas that I've found. So to be honest, both maps are pretty similar. They just kind of look different. So as long as you know how to interpret what you're looking at, both are acceptable. So we got that here. Go over here to the Hummingbird Fish Smart. So they're both very similar on the contours and what you're looking for, you can see we got some nice creek channels there against that long point. Um, you know, it really pops out nice on this tablet. It's a pretty high definition screen. So you can see all that stuff there. So I'm able to drop a waypoint and that allows me to navigate to those areas when I'm out on the water. So after studying the map, you know, this isn't something that I'll do all at once. This is something I'll do anytime I have time that I'm sitting on the couch, I'm hanging out at dinner on an airplane, wherever I might be. I can look at my phone, my tablet, my computer, and just continue to look at the lake and try and find those little sneaky spots that show up on the map, but you may overlook. Um, majority of the time, a lot of the good areas and the good spots are all on the mapping. It's just a matter of you to be able to spot them and figure out that the bass will be there. So I'll spend a lot of time looking at the map, looking at contours, dropping pins to be able to go out once I'm there. But after that, as far as research goes, that's pretty much it. I'm going to watch the weather about a month in advance. Check it just about every day. Make sure there's no big rainstorms, you know, cold fronts. Watch the temperature, the wind direction, which, you know, could muddy up one end of the lake or the other. And about a week or so out, I'm going to start to develop a plan for practice, which 
say, I'm going to focus on this end of the lake this day, this end of the lake that day. I'm going to divide it up for our three days of practice. You know, start doing that about a week prior and make adjustments as I get the weather forecast for practice and for the event. You know, like I said earlier, weather is a big, big factor in doing well in an event. Um, it's always an asterisk. You know, you could have the best practice of your life, find the b biggest school of bass in the lake. You could catch 20 pounds every cast and the weather could change and they'd move or you're not able to fish for them or something along those lines. So weather plays a huge role in it. So you always got to be playing the weather. That's one of the biggest things that I do about a month prior to an event is pay very much attention to the weather and uh, a lot of times it's going to help me be more successful. So hopefully you guys learned something here today about how to, pre how to prepare for an event. Drop it in the comments below how you do it. I'd love to hear how you guys prepare, any tips and tricks you guys might have to help me. And uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.